Well, good morning, everybody. And welcome to our service on Holy Communion on this special day. It's Mothering Sunday, the day when we, we, we think about our mums and all they have done for us. And not only do we think about them, but we give thanks for them as well. And that will be the gist of what I'll be speaking about later in, in our service. We're thinking about our, our mums and all they do for us. A couple of announcements before we start. First of all, Sunday school will resume next Sunday, the 26th of March at 10.30 in the parish hall. So please spread the word to the young people. Also, the Mother's Union overseas boxes are due to be returned this week. Uh, so thanking you in anticipation for your continued support. So that's your overseas boxes. Ladies, get them back in this week. Now, this next one is all about you doing a little bit of work. You're going to do a little bit of work. The spring clean. Tomorrow is the first day of spring, so an appropriate time to do it. It says here that traditionally the spring clean of a church and hall happened during March, but you've been able to do this since 2019. So that is being reinstated with spring clean this coming week. And they're appealing for your help to come along to the church whatever time suits you, along with cleaning equipment and products, Monday to Wednesday um, for the church and then the hall Thursday and Friday. So this is to facilitate ongoing bookings in the hall. And then there's this lovely little note at the bottom of here where it says, please give this appeal your full consideration and we look forward to your help and support this week. How could you refuse when it's worded so nicely? Now, those are all the announcements. Um, our opening hymn this morning is number 543. Lord of the home, your only son received a mother's tender love. 543. Our service is that of Holy Communion 2, commencing on page 201 of our prayer books. And we start with our greeting. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And the sentences of scripture for this season of Lent. From Psalm 51, we're told that the sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. 
And then we join together in the collect for purity. Almighty God, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write these, your laws, in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Let us pray. And we say together, Almighty God, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our collect, our special prayer for this Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Lenten collect. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm number 23 which you can find on page 616. Psalm 23, page 616. And as usual, we will read this by alternate half verse. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He shall refresh my soul. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Would you please be seated for our epistle reading, which is going to be read for us this morning by Hazel. The epistle can be found on page 216 of the New Testament, and is from the letter of Paul to Colossians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you are called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much, Hazel, for reading the epistle for us this morning. We're going to turn now to our hymn books again for our next hymn, which is number 361. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. 361. the gospel of our Saviour Christ according to John chapter 19 beginning at verse 25. Glory to you Lord Jesus Christ. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clophas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. 
Amen. Please have a seat. Very, very short reading. Just four verses. But something that contains so, so much for us to ponder, to reflect upon, and to take to heart. Today is Mother's Day, or to give it its correct name, Mothering Sunday. Today, the church recognizes in a special way the important place that mothers play. So what is today really all about? What do we do on this special day? Well, here's a few things I hope that you do today, if you haven't already done so. That is to give our mothers presents, gifts, maybe a card. Or perhaps we might organise some special treat for our mothers. Sunday dinner at the local hotel, if you can get in at this late stage. Or maybe a family get together in our homes. But why? Why would you do this? Your mums are there all the time. We have them with us daily. Well, f- for most of us anyhow. Surely it is a way of expressing our love for our mothers. A way of showing our appreciation for all that they've done for us over our lifetime. It's not, it is certainly not a day just for young children. Now, let's be very clear about that. It is not just a day for young children to give flowers or sweets. But it's also a day for us bigger children as well. One might even say that the longer we live, the more we have to say thank you for. So let's look for a few moments about what exactly we have to be thankful for. It's surprising how many things there are. And it was only when I sat down to write this that I actually realized just how much we have to be thankful for. It's surprising how many things there are. First and most importantly, our mothers are the ones who are responsible for bringing us into the world. That goes without saying. We couldn't be here without them. And after that, unforgettable event she is more than likely to be the one who has fed us washed us clothed us and in most cases the one who changed all those smelly nappies for us as well now gentlemen i don't wish to offend you especially in these more modern times but i'm sure there are many times that you have nursed your children when they were babies and all of a sudden when they didn't smell quite so sweet and nice you've picked them up and said honey i think the baby needs changing now i know there are there are fathers who who do that not so nice task and well done if you do that but generally in my experience i know when my kids were growing up <clears throat> roberta the kids need changed <laughs> was usually the words that, that came out of my mouth. But as we grow older, our mothers were the ones who taught us those all important first words. Now, as I, as I say these words to you this morning, it sounds a bit silly, but I have no doubt that many of you can relate to these words when you're standing over the pram, whether it's your child or another child, and you have gone up to them and you've gone, oh, could you, could you, could you, could you, and you've tickled them underneath their chin to try and make them laugh or smile, or you've done something even worse. You've pulled a funny face and gone <laughs> at them, trying to get a reaction from them. But you know something, those interactions with with children are very important. And in many cases, they're an introduction to the English language. And I don't know where you're going to find those words in the dictionary, but we we do all use them at times. And also, who was the one in the majority of cases who helped us take those first shaky steps? And who lovingly washed and bandaged those grazed knees? Who kissed better all those nasty bumps on our heads? 
You know, it's surprising how the pain always seemed to go away after that very, very special treatment. Well, the answer to those questions, of course, is it was our mums generally in the main who did those things. And who, here's another one, which even as a grandparent now, I I can relate to as well. Who would spend hours patiently coaxing us to learn those spellings or trying to get into our thick heads that two plus two does actually count up to four? I have a, a, a young grandson And I don't know what he did one day coming home from school. He was staying with us, but he could not get that into his head. He just couldn't get it. Well, again, it's our mothers, isn't it? And I know many dads will be saying to themselves, hey, I've done that as well. But gents, come on, it's Mother's Day. Let them have their wee bit of glory today. And then let's move on. Teenage years. Who warned you girls about the things that boys can get up to when they take you out at night? And boys, who was the one that told you how you should treat a girl when you take her on a date? And eventually, as we clawed our way into adulthood, who cried the most at our wedding as they lost their wee baby? I mean all of this in the most grateful and loving way. It was, of course, our mothers. You know, the examples could go on and on. Are they not the ones who showed us how to bring up our children, sharing their experiences with us? Are they not the ones who were only too willing to babysit when you wanted a night out or you had to go back to work? But, you know, this is not just a list of things that our mothers have done for us. It is, in fact, an example of love in action. Love in action. And I'm quite sure that as we grow older and take our place in the world, it does not matter to our mothers how successful or how rich we become, they will still love us. It doesn't matter to them whether you become a judge or a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, a clergyman or a choir singer, a a shop assistant or a lorry driver. Our mothers will always be proud of us. There is no one, no one like their son or their daughter. Yes, on this special day, we have every right to shower our mothers with gifts and treats, cards and flowers, for we do have a lot to thank them for. But how else can we show our love for our mothers? In that reading from John's Gospel this morning, very, very short reading, Jesus himself, as he died on the cross, well, he showed us how. Think of the words that he said, dear woman, to his mother, Here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. Even as he agonized at the point of death on that cross, he was thinking of others. He was preparing for the future of his mother by entrusting her into the care of the disciple whom he loved. And that was John. You know, Mary was like any other mother. She loved her son. And throughout her ministry, she was always there in the background. And even at the point of death, she was with him, immensely proud of her son, no matter what the people said about him, no matter what they thought about him, she was immensely proud of her son. And it should be remembered that in the time of Jesus, to die on a cross was a shameful and degrading death. But to her, it didn't matter. She would always love him. In many ways, the love of a mother shows that the, sorry, the love that a mother shows for her children can be likened to the love which God has for His people. As a mother nurses and cares for her children throughout infancy, providing for their every need, so God also 
will provide for our needs as we are infants in the faith. After all, wasn't he the one that provided us with our mothers in the first place? And as we struggle to our feet to take those first tentative steps, holding tightly to our mother's hands, afraid to let go in case we should fall, so God will also take us by the hand and lead us along the path to salvation. When we can walk by ourselves, but yet stumble and fall, our mothers are there to pick us up to patch our wounds, so also God will pick us up and forgive us and shower us with his love when we let him down. And as we go into the world to find our way, our mothers will be there to guide us in the right direction. And so God also will show us the path we should take if, if we will let him. God, like our mothers, loves us and cares for us. And he made us each with a will of our own. He has shown us right from wrong, good from evil. But in the end, he will leave us to make up our own minds and to make our own mistakes. But he will never stop loving us. And yet when we make the right decision, he will be the first one to cheer for us. But like our mothers, when we make the wrong direction, he will cry for us. God will cry for us. But he never stopped loving us. He, like a mother, will always be there, holding out his hands to us, inviting us to take hold and to rely on him. Now before I finish this morning, I would like to leave you with a short story. It's not a story about our mothers, but it's a story about God. And I'm sure many of you, when I start to read this, or even give you the title of it, you will say, oh yes, I know that story. But perhaps some of you have never heard it before, or you've forgotten what it's about. But let me, let me read it to you. It goes, One night a man had a dream. He dreamt he was walking along the beach with the Lord. And across the sky flashed scenes from his life. For each scene he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. And he noticed that many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of prints. And he also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. This really bothered him. And he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there is only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, My precious, precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During those times of trial and suffering, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. And you know, is that not also what our mothers have done for us over so many years? And I have little doubt that in their own special way, they will continue to do so for the rest of their lives. And so as you leave this church today, and in whatever way you decide to say thank you to your mothers, spare also a thought for the one who made her and you, and say thank you to him also. Let us pray. So we, Lord, we thank you for wives and mothers on whom the main work of the home usually falls. 
We thank you for their love and consideration for us and our families, for the hours they spend in providing and preparing our food, clothing, health, and all that goes towards a happy family. Help us to see ways in which we can make their lives easier by our thoughtfulness and our prayers for them. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We turn back to our prayer books, this time to page 205. And we take this opportunity to affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Page 205, please stand. We believe in one God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 585. Jesus good above all other, gentle child of gentle mother. 585. Let us pray. (coughs) 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith. Lord of your people, strengthen your church in all the world, especially in those areas where your people are facing persecution because of their love for you. Renew the life of this diocese of Armagh. Bless John, our Archbishop, and build us up in faith and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, look with the favour on the world you have made. Guide the nations in the ways of justice and of peace. And bless Charles, our King, and all in authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, of our relationship, comfort and sustain the communities in which we live and work. And we think of those who, for whatever reason, perhaps have lost a job and are finding it difficult to make ends meet. We pray, Lord, that we would love our neighbours as ourselves. And so enable us to serve our families and friends and to love one another as you love us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all healing, relieve and protect those who are sick or suffering. Be with those who have any special need. We think of those who are sick at home or in hospital. We think of those who tend to their needs. We think of the strain that there is upon our doctors and nurses in our health service. And we pray, Lord, that you would give them strength to face those long days and encouragement to know that they are doing your will for your people. Deliver all who know danger, violence or oppression and we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine who have lived in danger, injury, homelessness, hunger and cold for over a year. Be with them, Lord. But above all, be with those who would wage war and show them that what they're doing is wrong and bring peace to that land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord of eternity, bind us together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all who, having confessed the faith, have died in the peace of Christ, that we may entrust ourselves and one another and our whole life to you, Lord God, and come with all your saints to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Amen. And we say together, merciful Father, merciful Father, accept these, our prayers, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we join together in the prayer of humble access on page 207. We do not presume. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. And we turn to the third Eucharistic prayer, which you can find on page 216. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross, and with love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our dead. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace, one in Christ our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen. 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 And as our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. And remember that he died for you. So feed on him in your hearts by faith. With thanks.
Father, through your goodness, you have refreshed through your Son in word and sacrament. May our faith be so strengthened and guarded that we may witness to your eternal love by our words and in our lives. Grant this for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you, our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. During the singing of our next hymn, I think there's something special going to happen. And that, that ladies, you're going to receive a little Mother's Day gift. And I hope you enjoy it. But one word of warning. Make sure you water them. Keep them alive. Our next hymn is number 336. We thank you, God our Father, for all your loving care. 36. of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of you this Mothering Sunday and forevermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Oh,